point of view at our historic schoolhouse here in Columbia. This is a two-story brick schoolhouse and it was built in the year 1860. And so today we're gonna to be talking about students and teachers and what school was like back then. So nice to have you all joining us here today. Welcome to Columbia. I'm gonna turn my camera and introduce myself now. So hi everyone, my name is Randy. I work here at Columbia and I'll be your guide today. So we're gonna go ahead and explore this schoolhouse together. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. So I want you to imagine right now in your mind, close your eyes, think about what I'm about to tell you. Okay, so I want you to think. I want you to imagine being a student 100, over 150 years ago. So imagine yourself as a student 150 years ago. Raise your hand if you think you had school buses back then. Does anyone think there were school buses? Raise your hand if you know that for a fact there were no school buses back then. Yeah, no school buses. So think about how would students get here to this big schoolhouse? How would they arrive here? Think about that. Hmm, what would they take? So there's no school buses, no buses, period, and there's no cars. Raise your hand if you know how they would arrive, if you think you have an idea. Who thinks they know? Oh, a few of you know. Raise your hand if you're thinking maybe horses or wagons. Good, yeah, horses or wagons or just plain walking. But I'm gonna show you my this area where the school is. So the school is on top of a pretty big hill here in Columbia. And in order to get up the school, you would have to hike up here on top of this hill. And the hike is pretty difficult, especially in summertime when it gets very, very hot. So even today I drove up here, but students back then would have to haul all their um, books, all their homework, all the way up this hill. Now let's look at this school from the front. So this school is made out of red bricks and those bricks help the school stay really sturdy. And also they help protect it from fire. So here's the front of the school and there are two classrooms. So if you're a younger student, like first grade, where are my first graders at? Raise your hand. Do you have any first graders out there? Raise your hand if you're a second grader. So first graders, second graders, third graders, fourth graders, they would all be at the bottom floor. And then the older students, so if you have any older siblings, maybe in sixth grade, seventh grade, or eighth grade, who has an older sibling out there? Your older siblings would go at the top and they would be in the top floor classroom. And all the students would go enter the classroom through this door right here. And this is, would also be where they would play. Now, boys and girls were not allowed to play together. So boys played on one side and girls played on the other side of this big schoolhouse. And if the students had to go to the bathroom, they would have to come all the way out here. And this is, this, these are their bathrooms and these are called privies. So everyone go ahead and say the word privy to yourself. So they're not called bathrooms or restrooms. They're called privies. They're kind of like outhouses, like wooden porta potties. So we'll look inside. It's not very nice, but those are the privies. And privy stands for privacy. And you can see the moon shape on the door. So these privies would get very, very hot in summer and very cold in winter time since we can get pretty extreme weather up here. Today is a nice day, so it's not too hot. Let's go on inside. So we're not gonna enter the schoolhouse from the student entrance. We're actually gonna enter it from the teacher entrance. So the teachers would enter the schoolhouse from the back. And you can see the only light are from these windows or oil lamps, which we'll show you inside. So there wasn't any electricity. That means these students didn't have any technology, no Chromebooks. And so let's go inside to the teacher entrance. So the older student teacher would go up all those steps to the top floor classroom, which is pretty high. For the younger students, 
like all of you watching, your classroom would be on the bottom. So let's go inside this classroom here. And open the door and enter inside. So here is the younger student classroom. We're gonna take a look around, but first I wanna talk to you about some of the rules. So there were some pretty strict rules back then, and I'm gonna list a few of them for you. And if you have this rule in your classroom or at your house, if your parents have this rule, I want you to raise your hand. So let's see how different school was back then. All right, so on this paper, I have a list of old rules. So let's see, raise your hand if you have a rule like this in your school or at your house. Let's see, oh, never run inside the classroom. Do you have a rule like that? Are you allowed to run in your classroom? Are you allowed to run in your house? All right, so some of you have one like that. Do not carve on any furniture. Do you have a rule like that? Let's see. Do not chew gum or spit your gum out in the classroom. Oh, a lot of you have a rule like that too. All right, what else do you have? Hmm, you need to be clean in clothing. You can't show up to school dirty. Do you have a rule like that in your class at your school? Oh, some of you have a rule like that too. All right, let's see another one. Oh. Hmm, you cannot wear hats inside the classroom. Is that a rule that you have? Oh, that's another rule that you have, all right. Oh, another rule is this. Every day in the morning, as you walk into the classroom, your teacher is going to inspect your ear and your neck to make sure that you scrubbed. Do you have a rule like that in your classroom or at your house? Not a lot of students are raising their hand. I want you right now. Whatever adult or older sibling is around you, have them check. Have them check your ear and have them check your neck. And if your ear or your neck, if your ears or your neck are dirty, you couldn't go to school that day. They'd send you right back home because that's a sign of disrespect. They want you to be clean. So every day you have to wait in line and your teacher has to check. Did you scrub last night? Raise your hand. Oh, a lot of you, oh, some of you did. Okay, some of you might have to do this after the presentation. Let's see what else. Oh, here's something else. So if you throw something that you're not supposed to, maybe you throw something at your teacher or you throw something at your classroom from these desks, you could get whacked with the stick. And so what you'd have to do is your teacher would tell you, put your hands on the desk and then they would whack you with the stick. I don't think we still have a rule like that. No, that sounds pretty scary, but that's why you always wanna be on your best behavior because the teacher could make you put your hands up and whack you with the stick. So you always wanna make sure you're behaving and you're listening to your teacher. So still things that we have to do in school today and still things that we have to um, do for our parents as well. All right, so those are some of the rules for the students. But the teachers also had pretty strict rules. So let's see, every day, and you raise your hand if your teacher or your parents have to do this too. Every day teachers would have to fill in the lamps and clean the chimneys. No one's raising their hand on this one. What else? Each day the teacher has to bring in a big bucket of water. Does anyone have to do that? Nope. Let's see, what else? Um, hmm, oh, so the teachers had to make sure that all the feather pens were sharpened. Do your teachers have to do that? Do your parents have to do that? No. So teachers also had a lot of rules back then, some pretty strict rules. So it was kind of hard to be a teacher and to be a student. There was a lot of discipline involved. They wanted you to be on your best behavior. And so let's take a look at where you would sit. So I'm gonna turn my camera. This would be where you would sit and learn. So you would be two students to a desk. 
Do you think that boys and girls could sit with each other? What do you think? Yes or no? Go ahead and vote. Do you think boys and girls would be able to sit with each other? All right. I'm going to give you five more seconds to get your votes in. So five, four, three, two, one, and the poll, and I'm going to share the results. 19 of you said no, and you're exactly right. Boys and girls could not sit next to each other. So girls would be on one side and boys would be on the other side. And let's see what they would write with. So on their desk, well, you can see, they have what's called a slate board, kind of like a chalkboard. So they'd write with chalk, but remember they would also use ink pens. And those ink pens require little ink wells. So you take your feather pen, dip it in your ink, and you'd write with it that way. And these desks, what do you think about them? They're pretty small and they're wooden. Do you think they look very comfortable to sit on all day? What do you think? Would you wanna sit on these desks for eight hours? Yes or no? Do they look very comfortable to you? All right, I'm gonna give you five more seconds to vote. Five, four, three, two, and end the poll. What do you think? Well, most of the students out there watching said no. They do not think that these desks look very comfortable. And you're exactly right. They are actually pretty uncomfortable. And I'll show you. So even though I'm pretty tall, I want you to see how these desks work. I'm gonna turn my camera and you can see over here the teacher's desk, which is much more comfortable. And the teacher's desk is kind of raised so that he or she can look at the students and make sure they're not messing around with anything under their desk. Now I'm gonna turn my camera and I'm gonna sit in one of these desks. So let's see here. Hmm, I'm gonna go ahead and choose this desk right here. This one's actually not too bad, it's kind of wide. So you'd sit here. And you always want to have your hands on top of the desk. You never want to have your hands under the desk because if you have your hands under, your teacher might think you're messing around. Maybe you brought a toy to class. So your hands always go on top of the desk at all times. Also, your teacher can walk around and check under your fingernails. And if your fingernails are dirty, you can get whacked with that stick. So right now I want everyone to go ahead and take a look at your fingernails. Are your fingernails clean? Raise your hand if your fingernails are clean. Okay, some of you have clean. Raise your hand if you think you need to clean your fingernails after this presentation because you don't want to get in trouble by the teacher. Yeah, you don't want to get in trouble. So always have your hands on your desk, pay attention, sit up straight, do not slouch. So right now, if you're watching, sit up as straight as you can. Do not slouch. If you slouch, your teacher's going to get mad. Do you want to sit up straight? You would have your slate, like this right here. You'd have your chalk. You would hold up your answers. Your teacher would sometimes call on you, so you wanna make sure you have your book open and you're always paying attention. You don't wanna to talk to the person sitting next to you unless you're, get, you're allowed to talk to your neighbor. You wanna to keep to yourself, because if you don't keep to yourself, you can get in big trouble. And if you get in big trouble or you're not paying attention, I have some really bad news for you, and I'm gonna show you what that is. So if you're not paying attention, your teacher could call you up to the front of the classroom, and you could be made into, let me turn my camera, let me lower my camera. You might have to sit up here on this stool, and you could have to wear the dunce cap. And I'm gonna ask you a question right now. Do you think that the, being the class dunce is good or bad? What do you think? So I'm gonna relaunch a poll. Let's see, what do you think? Yes, if you think it's bad and no, if you think it's good. So yes, if you think being the dunce is bad. No, if you think being the class dunce is good. What do you think? Do you think it's a good thing? All right, I'm gonna give you five more seconds. Yes, if you think it's good. No, if you think it's bad. All right, and the poll, let's see, share the results. Most of you think it's bad. Yep, 
Being the class dunce is very, very bad. You don't want to be the class dunce. That means that you're kind of the class fool in a way. So it's an insult. You never want to be the class dunce. It's very, very embarrassing. So you would have to come up here to the front of the classroom in front of all your friends and you'd have to sit on this stool maybe for an entire lesson. I'm going to bring over the dunce cap so we can see it. You have to wear this big cone on your head that says the word dunce. And you're probably gonna get very red sitting up there in front of all your classmates. So let me know, would you ever wanna be the class dunce? Raise your hand if you'd wanna try it out. If you'd wanna wear the dunce cap. I don't know. I definitely would not wanna be the class dunce. So they used to do that in classes. I'm glad that they didn't do that in classes when I was in school because that's very, very embarrassing. So I'm gonna put the dunce cap back now. All right. So a few students each day would probably have to wear that dunce cap because they weren't paying attention. That's why you wanna pay attention. Don't throw anything in your classroom. Always listen to your teacher. Now let's continue on our tour. So you can see, since I mentioned that it gets pretty cold up here, your only heat is going to be these coal stoves. So each day you're gonna to have to load up those stoves with the coal. So it's a lot of work. And then over here we have, hmm, what is that? Raise your hand if that looks like a piano. Does anyone think that's a piano? It kind of looks like a piano, right? It's actually called an organ, similar to a piano, but it has really important pedals, which kind of give it air and that allows you to play some of the notes. So I'm gonna show you this organ. I'm gonna try to play it. I'm not very good at it. So I'm going to move my camera and lower my camera so you can see. So let's see, let me try to play this organ. It's not very easy. I'm still learning how to do it. Not very good at the piano, so I'm not very good at the organ either. I'm gonna move my camera a little bit. Give me just a second. All right, so let's see here. Need to stretch out my fingers and I'll take a seat on this stool. And so music in classes were very important. And so maybe your teacher could say, Bob, Billy, Anne, come up here and play the organ. And I hope you're prepared to play the organ because if you get a note wrong, your teacher could get upset. So you always wanna make sure that you practice your music. Does anyone know how to play the piano or has ever played the piano before? Oh, some of you have. So some of you would probably be pretty good at this organ. So let's see if I can play something. So I have to push down on the pedals to give it air. That doesn't sound very good. So it can be pretty loud. Let's see. I'm gonna try to play a little tune for you. Oh, I messed up. And since I messed up, the teacher could come over and could make me the class dunce for not practicing. So I probably will only have one more chance. So let's see if I can do it. All right. Push on the pedals to give it some air. I did it. Yay, I'm so happy. All right, hopefully now the teacher won't get upset with me. That is the organ. You always want to make sure you practice your music skills because you never know when your teacher can make you come up here. And also you want to know the lyrics to the songs. You don't want to get the lyrics wrong. That would also be very embarrassing. So let's continue and we're going to go to the back of the schoolhouse now. So some students would sit in the, on the front desk. And other students would sit in the back. And if you're in the back, you might be right in front of this other stove. So that was used to heat the back portion of the classroom. And then over here, I want to point this out to you really quickly. It's one of my favorite things in this whole classroom. So I'm going to turn my camera down. And I want you to take a look at this tiny little desk here. It's very, very small. I'm going to ask you another question. So this 
is a, this is gonna be true or false. This desk would be used by fourth graders. True or false? Launching the poll now, what do you think? Do you think fourth graders back then could fit in this desk? Or does it seem maybe more of a first graders desk? What do you think? Is that true or false? Could fourth graders fit in this desk back then? All right, five, four, three, two, and end the poll. And let's see what you think, share the results. So 17 of you think that that's false. Fourth graders cannot fit in that desk, they would break it. 10 of you think it's true. 10 of you are right, it is true. That is a fourth grader's desk from back then. But look how tiny it is. Do you know any fourth graders? Raise your hand if you know a fourth grader. Do you think those fourth graders that you know, could they fit in this desk or do you think they'd break it? When I was in fourth grade, I would definitely break this desk, but that tells us that kids were smaller back then than they are today. So this is about like a kindergartner's desk today, but it would actually be for fourth graders. So people were smaller back then. They had different diets, different types of medicine, not as many options um, for medicine or for medical care. So they were much smaller than we are today. That's why fourth graders could fit in that. It's kind of incredible, pretty surprising how small students were back then. Now I wanna show you over here. So your teacher would write your lessons on, oh, whoops, didn't mean to flip my camera over. So you can see this big stove right here. Oh, another thing too, these stoves are gonna get really hot. They're used to heat the entire classroom. So if you're walking around, you never wanna accidentally hit into this stove going to be scorching hot so it's pretty dangerous to have this inside your classroom all right i'm going to turn my camera and let's take a look at this chalkboard here so your writing would be done in chalk and this is a list of all the chores the students would have to do so students back then would have to do chores before school started in the morning and after school so they couldn't leave school right away they'd have to stick around a little bit to do some of these chores so I'm gonna list some of these chores. Raise your hand if you would be willing to do this chore in your class. So some of the chores are clean the windows. Would you be willing to clean the big windows here in this classroom? Oh, some of you said yes. All right, another chore is to bring in the firewood. Would that be a chore that you'd wanna do? You can imagine these students having to carry all this heavy firewood each day now, those were the chores before school. So you had to arrive to school about an hour early, but there were also some chores after school. So over here, you can see some of those chores. So after school, you'd have to clean the chalkboards. Is that something you'd wanna do? You would clap the chalk erasers, which it's gonna cover you in a bunch of chalk dust. You would have to sweep the floors. And the last thing is clean up the privies or the bathrooms. Would you wanna do that? Lower your hands if that's not something that you'd wanna to have to do. All right, seems like some of you don't wanna to have to do that job. The most popular job is usually cleaning the chalkboards. Maybe that doesn't sound too bad. And then since there weren't any water fountains, you would all share this water basin right here. And so you'd come back here, you'd raise your hand of course, Tell your teacher you needed a drink of water. Come back here, take your tin cup, scoop some water and drink it that way. So you'd all share the same water basin. And then let's take a look in the back. So on this chalkboard, you can see all the cursive writing. So back then they would write in cursive. They had to be pretty good at cursive. And then there's also a list of all the kids who have to stay after school. These students were not behaving. So Elizabeth has to stay after, Harold has to stay after, Betty has to stay after, Thomas, Lucas, and Anna all have to stay after school. Now I'm gonna pick one student in the participants who also has to stay after school virtually today. So let me see, I'm gonna click and see everyone's name, all the attendees. I'm going to say that Emily, has to stay after school. And Huck, you have to stay after school too. Jackson, Emiliano, and Christy. 
you are all the students I'm going to choose to stay after school today. Raise your hand if you're happy I didn't call your name. Oh, a lot of you feel relieved that I didn't call your name. And then over here, I wrote the name of the park in cursive. Now I want you to have a pencil with you or a piece of paper. I know most of you probably don't have chalkboard, so go grab a piece of paper and a pencil really quickly. And we're gonna try to write this word in cursive together. If you've never written in cursive before, don't worry about it, it's just a practice run. When you have your piece of paper and your pencil, raise your hand. When you're ready to go. All right, get it ready. We're gonna try cursive. Don't worry if you've never tried it before. It might just look like a bunch of scribbles and that's okay. My cursive's not very good either. So don't feel too bad. All right, so let me turn my camera and I'm going to try to rewrite this word Columbia for you now. All right, so here's our chalkboard. I don't have a chalk eraser, so I just have to use some old some paper towel. And then of course I would have my chalk. I have a really tiny little piece of chalk. So let's see fix my camera and I'm gonna to try to now write the word Columbia in cursive. With cursive, it's very important. Between the letters, do not lift your hand up. So I'll give you an example. So if I were just writing the word Columbia, I would do a C and I would do an O and I would lift up my finger again to do an L and again to do a U. In cursive, can't lift up your finger. You have to leave your, leave your hand on the paper. All right, so that's a very important rule. And I'm gonna erase it and I'm gonna try again. So Columbia, Columbia starts with a C. So everyone make a C and hold it. Do not lift up your hand. Do not lift up your fingers. The next letter is an O, so make an O. Just make a circle, circle it. Do not lift up your fingers. Our next letter is an L. So we're gonna curve upwards up to the sky and loop it back around. That. All right. If yours looks different, don't worry about it. It's our first time doing this together. Our next letter is a U. Don't lift your finger up. Make a U. U. Our next letter is an M. Make an M. Don't lift your finger up. Our next letter is a B. Try to make a B. It's going to be go up towards the sky. Make a little loop. And make a B. My B is pretty bad. Now you're gonna need an I. So make a little I, connect it. I lifted mine up just as an example, but you can see my eye starting right here. Don't lift your finger up to do the dot yet. So I'm gonna continue from my eye, and then we're gonna make an A. So make a circle and give it a little tail. Mine looks really bad. Does yours look better than mine? Raise your hand, it won't hurt my feelings. Mine looks really some of you, oh wow, all right, I would like to see that. I want you to prove that yours looks better than mine. Mine's bad, but I don't want that bad. Let me do it one more time. I'm gonna do it a little bit faster. So cursive is supposed to be faster than always having to lift your hand up. So let's see. C O L U M B I A. So it is a lot faster. Still doesn't look very good. So that's cursive. So you have to make sure that your cursive was very neat so your teacher could read it. All right. So now let's go ahead and head to the front of the classroom now. So let me turn my camera and we're gonna take a little bit of a walk between the narrow desk and this is where your teacher would walk through. And he or she would make sure hands on your desk Heads forward, pay attention. Don't talk to your neighbor. And then they would make their way up to the front and make sure they look out at all the students to make sure they're all paying attention. Well, right now I have a little story for you. And this is an old story. It's more like a poem. So I'm gonna turn my camera. And so all the students would get their own little readers, and they'd have to pay attention so that the teacher could call on you and say, let's see, who am I gonna call on out of the students watching? Oh, I know, I'm gonna call on Greta. They'd say, Greta, your turn to read. 
And if you don't know the spot where you left off, you could get in big, big trouble for that. So I'm gonna read this little story. It has a little lesson to it. And you can see this story is called The Two Sisters. And look at the old drawings and what the girls would wear back then. So if you notice the girls are wearing big dresses and big bonnets, there's no color. So this is the two sisters. There once were two sweet little girls named Margaret and Kate and every day they went to school and they never went late. Their mother, she was kind to them and wished them to obey. She always sent them both to school and told them not to play. So that's their schoolhouse. And you can see the different types of outfits they're wearing, really big bonnets and big dresses. Do I have anyone in the audience who'd wanna wear an outfit like that to school every day? Raise your hand. That's pretty fancy and looks really uncomfortable. I don't think anyone wants to. But once they met some other girls who'd stopped a while to play and made a little baby house where they might spend the day. So they stopped along their way to school and they started playing with some other girls. The school was out, they all went home, for night was coming fast. But these two girls who stopped to play both fell asleep at last. So instead of going to school, they fell asleep out there by the schoolhouse. That means, that's not good. They're probably gonna get in big trouble for that. Their mother wondered where they were and looked and looked each way. She thought that they were coming home and might have lost their way. So she put on her hat and shawl and after them did go. The night was dark, the rain did fall, and loud the wind did blow. So there the mother is in her big giant dress and her big bonnet. She found them both and took them home. And after that dark night, they never disobeyed her more and always acted right. So that's the little lesson here. So you can see the mother had to go and fetch them and brought them home. So this story tells us always listen to your parents. Always pay attention to your parents. So that's an example of children's stories from the 1850s. So a lot different than our stories today. All right, now let's do a little look, our final little, um, little exploration today is going to be to take a look at some of the toys that children would play with back then. All right, so I'm gonna hold up some of these toys. Some of you will recognize um, some of these toys. You might even have toys like this at your house. So let's see what kids would play with back then. So I'm gonna turn my camera. Although you wanna make sure you never, ever, ever bring these uh, toys to school with you. Your teacher would get very, very upset. So always leave your toys at home. So let's see here. In this basket, I have a doll. So they would have dolls back then. Their dolls were not made out of plastic. Their dolls were usually made out of cotton. And you can see she has a little cotton dress and pretty plain little face. Some students sometimes think this face is a little scary. Do you think this doll's a little scary? Raise your hand if you think so. I don't think she's scary, but some kids do. So a little cotton doll stuff with, um, you know, made of a cotton dress, stuff with cotton as well. So pretty simple. There were also something called a Jacob's Ladder. You can see it here. Do you recognize this, a toy like this? Raise your hand if you do. So some you might recognize. Very good. We also have things like some wooden blocks made out of wood that's been now shave down so you won't get any splinters. So a lot of these toys were made out of wood just because it's cheaper that way. So maybe your parents would make these toys for you. We also have this little top that's hand painted. And one of my favorite toys here is this toy. Just like the ball and cup game. So you have your cup and the string ball on the other end and you'd have to try to get the ball into the cup, which unfortunately for me, I'm pretty bad at it. This is a pretty big one. I don't know, I'm not good at it. Have you ever played a game like this before and been able to get the ball in the cup? Some of you probably have. Yeah, I'm really, really horrible at it. You need pretty good hand-eye coordination. Unfortunately, my eyesight, I guess, is pretty bad. So I've never actually been able to get that ball into the cup. 
That's another game, but my favorite game of all is a game called Circles. And this game is actually made out of wooden, wooden circle here. And this circle has some pretty ribbons attached to the side of it. So this is a game called Circles and here's how it works. So you're gonna want at least two players and each player is going to have their own basically like drumsticks, big giant sticks. Here's how it works. So you're gonna take the sticks, you're gonna put them through the circle like so. And you're going to want to cross the circle. So make like an X with that circle. Now the point of this game is to launch the circle. So I'll show you what I mean. So I'm gonna take a couple steps back. This is not something you've ever played in the classroom, just to let you know. Students cannot bring this game to school. So I cross the circles and now I'm gonna throw the circle. If I was playing with someone else, the other person would have to catch the circle with their drumsticks. All right, I'm gonna to toss it. So I have my six crossed, now I'm gonna throw it. To throw it, I have to uncross the sticks. Now, it can go pretty far depending on how um, strong your throw is. So I'm gonna do it one more time. Let me go get this circle. So again, here's my circle. And this time I'm gonna launch it so you can see how far it can go. So let me try to make it to the very back desk. So I have my circle and my sticks and they're crossed and now I'm gonna uncross them and throw them. Whoa, that went pretty far. All right, I'm actually not too bad at six. Okay, so with that said, we got to check out the schoolhouse and learn about students back then and teachers back then. So now that you know what school was like in the year 1860, do you think you would want to be a student back in 1860? Raise your hand if you would. Some of you would. Oh, okay. Maybe you want to play the organ or you want to play with some of these toys or you like some of the stories they read back then. Well, before I let you go, I'm going to pick one student of the day out of their names. So let's see. Whose name am I going to pick? Hmm. I'm going to choose, oh, there's so many students to choose from. I'm going to choose Rebecca S. is going to be my student of the day. So good job, Rebecca. That means you were very, very well behaved during this presentation. No one would want to be the dunce. You'd rather be the student of the day. All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining me today here in Columbia. It was a pleasure to show you around on this final day of home learning programs. Um, thank you so much. Bye everyone from Columbia. Enjoy 2020. You, you don't really want to be here during 1860. Mm, pretty hard. All right. Bye everyone. Thank you.